Okay, this is a CP300 and it uh, came to me stuck on one channel. Um, actually, it wasn't really even a channel, <laughs> but it was stuck. Uh, the EEPROM was not working and thank God, luckily, whatever you want to call it, you know, thank the tree frogs. <laughs> it doesn't matter who you thank because the customer is very lucky. The EEPROM was not the problem, which is this critter right here. Um, because if that EEPROM goes bad, yeah, this radio just became a paperweight. Um, it had some problems, but the problem was was the negative voltage that's supposed to be supplied to the EEPROM, um, which is part of the power supply circuit. And some of the power supply circuit in this radio eh, doesn't get much more straightforward and simple. But when it comes to the negative supply in these radios, holy shit, did CPI ever take the long way around to get a negative voltage? Uh, there are days I look at this, and it's the first time I've ever had to deal with that circuit, and you're left sitting there scratching your head going, what in God's name was going through their heads? <laughs> so... Nowadays, we just drop in a negative voltage regulator, you know, um, I mean, hell, they use voltage regulators in these things. I mean, right here is a 7805, okay, hanging off the front panel. So, you know, it's it's not like they didn't use them. But, yeah, when it came to the negative supply, ah, we can't do anything like that. We're going to use the AM local sideband oscillator circuit as the power supply, more or less, which is basically what they do. They use the AM local sideband oscillator circuit, two-thirds of the way through that circuit, so it goes through two uh, divide by 16 counters right here. So actually, I can show that on the scope. If I can get the camera repositioned here, so eh, I'll never catch the scope and the radio in the same picture, I don't think. I can't even slide it back far enough. Yeah, oh, yeah, right there. There we go. So... They had, ah, I had my little piece of heat shrink tubing over the speaker terminal there. Keep them shorting out against anything. Okay, so radio turned on. Pin 11 is the outputs on those divide-by counters. So, there we go. There's the output, right around 800 megahertz. And then it comes in pin 14 on this one, which was replaced. You can see there's the same signal going into this counter. And then comes out pin 11. Right there. So it's been divided by 16 again. Pardon me to reach over there, hit auto set really quick. Okay, so now you can see it's been dropped down to about 50 kilohertz. And then that comes out and comes over to this IC, comes in pin 8 and 9. So you can see that in the picture or not. There. That comes in right here. So you can see the same signal up there on the screen. And then now let's take a look at that on the schematic. So here's our. You can see here's our AM lower sideband oscillator circuit. Comes up through this first divide by 16 counter. So that's where you saw the original signal. About 800 megahertz comes out and then comes out pin 11 on the next divide by 16 counter. And it's down to about 50, or not megahertz, kilohertz. Um, comes down to about 50 kilohertz here. Um, as far as the PLL circuit's concerned, then it would go into the another one and then come down in through the phase detector circuit. But it also, if you notice, there's a tap right here. Well, this tap comes down, and if you follow over under the next page, and way over here, goes the pin 8 and 9 in the power supply. So that's on another schematic. Yes, this thing has more damn pages of schematic. 
got what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten yeah ten pages worth <laughs> so in any case that comes in you can see right here divide by 16 counter pin 11 so that's where we were just at on the other schematic that comes in to this DC converter and then you end up with down here at this point which is actually TP8 which Sam's did forget to uh, uh, annotate on their schematics here. They actually forgot to write TP8 on these. Um, so that's where that negative 8 volts is supposed to, be, supposed to be. So at this point it's still a positive voltage. At this point it's a negative voltage. But like I say, we didn't have any voltage here. So no voltage here. Well if you follow TP8 that eventually ends up supplying because that comes back out of the power supply circuit then. So yeah, it's kind of almost a, <laughs> a perpetual loop. <laughs> the PL part of the PLL circuit or the synthesizer circuit is the power supply, and part of the power supply is the synthesizer circuit. Yeah, it's like I said, it's a big loop, but it ends up same thing, pin eight. So that's where it comes in, feeds. You can see it feeds the your memory, and then also comes up over to one of the programmable dividers over here. But, uh, yeah, that voltage was missing. Now, troubleshooting all of that was a bit of a pain in the ass. I think it, the problem was caused by someone doing modifications. I've removed a couple jumpers. They don't appear to have been channel modifications. I don't know what the hell somebody was doing. Uh, I honestly could care less. I've gotten to the point of all you'll often hear me say. I could care less what was going through people's minds because I used to try and figure it out. I've given up. People just have absolutely no clue what the hell they're doing sometimes, I think. <laughs> so, I think they caused the problem. And, like I say, thankfully they didn't destroy the memory IC because there are no replacements. The only things that were damaged were uh, 700 or 7,000 series chips. So, you know, there's a 7402, that was bad. We've got a 7493, the divide, divide by counter, that one was bad. Um, I also changed uh, one of these transistors as part of the DC converter circuit. But the initial troubleshooting was very easy. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. A great place to start, especially if you're new at uh, doing troubleshooting, is the alignment procedure. And once again, this radio is a perfect example of why checking the alignment is a great place to start. Even though you partially know what the problem is, it's stuck, it won't change channels still. A lot of times the alignment procedure can narrow you down to a point of where where is your problem because you may see you have signals in one place or another. Well, in the case of this radio, you didn't have to get very far into the alignment procedure. So, uh, preliminary adjustments or you know, voltage regulator, oscillator, fine here. Notice the first, the absolute first thing in the synthesizer alignment. Input of DC meter to that TP8, which like I say, they did forget to mark that on a schematic. But check for your negative DC voltage. That was completely missing. Actually, I had like positive 0.2 or something like that. There was a small positive voltage there. So, like I say, best place to always start is the alignment procedure. Uh... So it looks like this radio is working fine again now. Um, I haven't done anything else to it. I need to contact the customer now because I told him I said if uh, I'd troubleshoot it. Um, most of the time when these are stuck on one channel, it's the bad. The memory chip is bad and you're screwed. Um, as long as that's okay, pretty much anything else in this radio can be replaced. Transistors, all of the other ICs, standard everyday, run of the mill, off the shelf, 7000 series. ICs, so you know nothing there. Everything else is fairly easy to to come by. But uh, that one IC, yeah, you're screwed when that one goes bad. So he got lucky. But now I need to contact him and see see what else he he wants anything else done to this. But uh, main thing is it works. <laughs> And not a lot of skip today. Is some. Um. 
Yeah, side band's quiet. hard for me to see the damn channel display there on the bottom. But, there you go. Another CPI CP300 this time. Saved from the paperweight pile, or scrap bin. <laughs> so, I just wanted to show that, that uh, like I say, alignment procedures often a very good place to start. Uh, this radio is absolutely no different and a prime example of why that's a good place to start. And I just wanted to, one of the main things I wanted to show was, was the, I don't know what to say other than brain fart they had when they came up with that negative, negative voltage source supply. Yeah, using part of the oscillator circuit, yeah, it's <laughs> just really strange. But, hey, it works. <laughs> when it does work, it works, so... And I think if somebody hadn't been in here putting jumper wires in, I honestly, I still don't know what the hell they were thinking. I still got a, I've got some of those jumper wires. Like I say, they're just hanging up, not attached to anything anymore. I got to remove all this shit. But uh, have no idea what they were trying to do. So they'll get removed. Put it back to the way it's supposed to be. So there you go.